All right, there's been some uh, recent discussion, so I've decided to try to tackle a new topic. Um, let's talk about rotor blades and what's on the inside and what makes a difference. Um, just basic anatomy of a blade. And keep in mind, I'm not a blade manufacturer. This isn't like for 400 level reference in college for your thesis. Uh, just some observations. Down at the, uh, the root of the blade, where it's going to be clamped into your grip, um, a lot of blades will have some sort of a brass collet inserted through so you can't crush it. Other blade designs, uh, this area is just completely filled with resin. As you span along down the blade, most of the blade is relatively uniform until you get out towards the tip. And as you get out towards the tip, usually in the last few inches of the blade, there is actually a weight out here which is out there to give you some added inertia um, for stable stabilization but also to put enough mass in the blades for to make auto rotations possible and also the other handling characteristics. Um, another feature some blades have, some don't, is there's a safety wire that runs completely down the leading edge of the blade. And that safety wire is there so when you go out and start tilling dirt that you don't have blade parts slinging you know every which way that actually keeps the blade together. What I've got here on the table in front of us are a bunch of pieces so we can actually see what's inside. So the first blade I'm going to show you is off of an SWE 600. It would be Sungwoo Engineering. And these are all carbon blades we're looking at tonight. And you'll notice right away that it's not completely solid. It's not completely filled case of this blade we have what looks to be a hard balsa or maybe a soft basswood. Actually it's, it, it's definitely balsa, it's soft. Uh, a soft wood spar that runs down the length of the blade. Uh, it does have a safety wire. You can see that piece of metal right there that's uh, resined into the leading edge. But you can see that for the most part the blade is hollow. Now this blade, there's enough of it out here that we didn't get into the weight. I'll show you that on, on a blade here in a second. Another blade that's interesting enough hollow, as you might guess from the way that looks, this is a night blade. This is actually the MS Composite 600 millimeter, And this blade is actually completely hollow. There is nothing inside. Uh, one of the things that leads to is you're going to have, to have a very strong skin on the outside so you can't crush it. But here's the other half where the battery was. Uh, one thing you'll also note you look at the leading edge, there's no safety wire on this blade. Uh, actually, this particular set of blades I had, I actually was able to fail them in flight. They didn't come apart, but what happened is they kept getting softer and softer and softer to the point where they wouldn't track reasonably, and the handling characteristics just went out the window. We'll thank BJ for this one. He just recently wad up his uh, Curtis Youngblood 600mm the other night on his T-Rex 600. So if you look down here, at the root, we see the safety wire. We see a bunch of resin which is coming back to fill in this area. There is no metal spacer in here or collar. But we also see a different material now. Now we see some blue foam. Uh, this blade uses foam in between the top and bottom layer of carbon to help give some extra, some extra uh, structural strength to it, keep it from twisting. Again, you see a safety wire. Um, if you were in here in person, you would see that we're, it looks like we're into the, the, the weight out here at the end. Um, not sure what they're using, but it's not lead. Feels like it's something else different. Like I said, I'm not an expert. Another blade we'll show here. Let's grab this one. This is off of a Rotortech 610, thanks to me the other day. Uh, again, we see a foam, we see a lot of resin up here at the root, we see a safety wire as we look out towards the tip of the blade. Again, we see foam, but we also see the lead weight out here. And there in the center, you'll still see that safety wire carrying through. Here is an Align 700 millimeter blade, or it could be, let's, let's put it this way, it's off of a a 90 size ship. Um, again, foam, resin, safety wire, 
foam out at the tip and here's the leading edge again for the weighted, weighted section we see a, a lead mass with a safety wire run through it kind of a common theme final blade here is a rotor tech 600 actually that's not the right tip to it no <laughs> Anyway, again, same theme as the, the 610. You have uh, safety wire, foam, and uh, we're, again, we're not out here to the weight yet. It's still out here in this part of it, so it's just resin in there. And last one, last but not least, but worth a, worth a mention, this is an old V-blade, old uh, V2-6 V-blades. What do you see there? No foam, no safety wire. But you got two select hardwoods. Matter of fact, there's even what looks to be maybe a, a different sort of wood material that's embedded here in the leading edge. So I'm not quite sure what Vic was thinking on that, how it works, but a different blade technology that uses wood. So where are we going with all this discussion? We'll show you in a second. All right, so we're going to do a little scientific. I wouldn't call it swag close but what we're going to do is we're going to measure the twists on some blades uh, we're going to do this in kind of a crude fashion uh, there's no benchmark that I'm aware of that's published and you know, everything's kind of a trade trade secret for each manufacturer but what we're going to do is I've got uh, two blades one is a, a rotor tech 610 uh, the other is one of these inexpensive $45 carbon fibers and we're going to measure the twist on it. We're going to put a small load. So both blades have a blade grip attached with the appropriate spacers. And I've used a 4 millimeter um, carbon tube in there for, for the bolt. What we're going to do is we're going to load this into the calibrated vise. All right, guys, here's the old infamous vise again. We need to calibrate it. This time I got two assistants. Uh, these guys are... Uh, Kind of be hopping around out by the by the shop door. So, here, who wants to press the button first? Antoinette, you're you're awfully chatty. Here, you, you press the button. Here, I'll help you. All right, very good. I think Suzanne can do a little better job here. I'll let you go there. Here, you want to try it, Suzanne? Ooh, that was a nice brief one, wasn't it? Either way, the vice is calibrated. There you go, girls. 